Well, hey everybody. Today, we're going to talk about the accounting cycle. In other words, how does this accounting stuff work in real life? Well, we have a standard sequence of events. Transactions occur all the time, and each time a transaction occurs, it is recorded in the form of a journal entry. Then, from time to time, the information from the journal entries is transferred or posted to the general ledger account by account. Then, when we come to the end of each month, we have what's called a month in close. And at that point, the accountant takes an extract of the general ledger called the trial balance. Now, a trial balance is simply a listing of the ending balances in each account. And then, the accountant uses that information to prepare the financial statements. Now, here's the key thing to know. In our system, everything is expressed in debits and credits. But the financial statements are prepared for the general public. So the accountant acts as a translator, translating that out information out of our uh, language of debits and credits into a what we call natural sign so that the general public can understand it. Now, let's take a look at the form of the trial balance. Okay. First of all, we'll have a list of all of our accounts in their standardized order. Now, remember, all accounting systems order the accounts in a standard sequence. Assets first, liability, equity, revenue expenses. And then we show in two columns the balances in those accounts at the end of the month. Some, the, in one column, we have the debit balances. In another column, we have the credit balances. And we always show control totals at the bottom so that we see that the total of the debit balances is always equal to the total of the credit balances. Now, the accountant takes this information and prepares the financial statement. The first financial statement is the income statement. Now, the income statement is based on revenues and expenses. So, we will take the revenues and show them as a positive number and subtract the expenses to calculate the net income. Now, the second statement is the statement of retained earnings. Now, the retained earnings account is a special purpose account within the equity section. And retained earnings means the total accumulated amount of earnings from the very first day the company opened until the present, less whatever portion of those earnings the company's paid back to investors as dividends. That's what we call the amount retained, retained earnings, the net amount retained in the company. Now, in the statement of retained earnings, we'll pick up the balance shown on the trial balance, which is typically the balance at the end of last year. And then we will add to that the net income for the current period, and which increases the uh, retained earnings, will subtract any dividends that have been paid this year, and that will give us an updated balance in the retained earnings. Then, finally, we do the balance sheet. Now, the balance sheet, we're going to take information from this part of the trial balance. We're going to have assets on the left side, shown as positive numbers, and on the right-hand side, we'll have liability and equity accounts, shown as positive numbers, with the totals balancing on both sides. Now, the only tricky thing is remembering in the balance sheet in the equity section, the balance that we show for the retained earnings account is not the balance from the trial balance, but it's the updated amount shown in our statement of retained earnings. So, this is the sequence of events, and we do run through this process every month of the year, January through to December. Now, at the end of December, after we've done the final December close, and after we've finally published the, the uh, financial statements for the year, we do one final step, and it's called the closing entry. In fact, in some accounting systems, it's referred to as the 13th month. Now, this set of closing entries accomplishes two things. Number one, it clears out the balances of all the revenue and expense accounts to zero. Why do we do this? Well, revenues and expenses are measured in increments of one year, and we report them year by year. So, when we finish one year, to prepare for the following year, we have to be able to start the new year with a clean slate. So, we zero out the balances in all the revenue and expense accounts, and we net that amount together, and we transfer it into the retained earnings account. So, thereby, the second thing we accomplish is we update the retained earnings account in the ledger one time per year, so that at the end of the year, it now includes the income from the current year. Okay, now I'd like to demonstrate this in a very simple way. Here we go. Now, let's say that this jar represents the retained earnings uh, for the period up until the end of last year. And that means the retained earnings from the very first day the business opened up until the end of last year. 
Now we're starting a new year, and let's say that we're going to record our re revenues and expenses here. So in January, we record some revenues and expenses. In February, some more revenues and expenses. In March, some more revenues and expenses, and so forth, all the way through the year until we get to December. And now we've recorded the revenues and expenses for the whole year. Then, when we do the closing entries, we take this, the net amount of the revenues and expenses for the year, and transfer it into the retained earnings account, thereby updating the retained earnings account so that it now includes the net income from the year just ended. Now, how does this work from the point of view of the general ledger? Well, let's say we come to the end of the year and you show these amounts in your account. You've got revenues of $1,000, and we notice that we show our credit balance there, and we've got three different kinds of expenses, $100 each. And notice expenses are always debits, revenues are always credits. So, at the end of the year, how much net income did this company make? Net income of $700. So, we're going to do the closing entry, and it works like this. Revenues, we're going to debit $1,000, clears that account to zero. Expense, credit $100. Clear to zero, credit 100, clear to zero, credit 100, clear to zero. Now, you see up until this point, we have $1,000 of debits, $300 of credits. We need another credit of $700 to make this entry balance, and we credit that $700 to the retained earnings account. And you'll notice this $700 represents the net income of the year, that it's been transferred into the retained earnings account to update the retained earnings account. And that's how the closing entries work. Now, in some systems, they use an intermediary step called the income summary. But in any event, the end results come out exactly the same. Now, there are two important takeaways that you need to get from this lesson. Number one, remember the, the closing entries, that remember that revenues and expenses are measured in one year period. And one time per year, at the end of the year in the closing entries, we, trans we clear those entries out of revenues and expenses so that we have a clean slate for the next year and transfer the net amount into the retained earnings account, thereby updating it. And remember this also, that within our accounting system, we're always working with debits and credits. But we, as accountants, act as translators, and every month we translate that information into natural signs in the form of financial statements so that the general public can understand it. Hope that's been helpful. Bye-bye.